I ever experienced a Souls game. Why die in the Nexus? Well, because... Oh shit, Mad Pretty. Damn, coming in hot with a lot of subs, huh? Thanks. Thanks very much, Mad Pretty. Four years in a row. Keep your hot dogs out. Um, you die in the Nexus because... It, if you, you do that as an insurance plan. Because if you accidentally die in one of the stages while you're alive, you will lower that stage's world tendency. So, you die in the Nexus so that just in case you die in the worlds, it doesn't fuck anything up, basically. And you... To play it safe and manipulate the world tendency the way you want to, you kind of have to be dead all the time. And that's the reason why the cling ring is so important. You're going to be wearing it all the time to get maximum health, you know? Anyway. What's up, Mysterious94? Cobra Kai, what's up? Okay. Let's see here. Where are we? Mm, I got my souls. I leveled up. Oh, yeah. I have the jade hair ornament. I could talk to this guy. It's a quest item. When a scourge came, when a... That... Best of luck. That was the first time I talked to him, so you have to trigger this. May I ask, would you... So he's seen that I have the jade hair ornament and he wants me to give it to him. It belonged to his daughter Thank or some you. shit. Well, it's not, but it's seemed anyway. As a reward, he gives me the ring of Herculean strength. And that brings me to the explanation of item burden and equip burden. So in this game, you can see in the middle of the screen, there is an equip burden and an item burden. The Equip Burden functions similarly to Dark Souls 1 and Dark Souls 2, but the details are a little different. Who gives a shit? The Item Burden is the maximum amount of stuff that I can carry with me on my person. This does not exist in Dark Souls 1. Uh, you can carry an unlimited amount of items on your person in that game, and I think that that's a better choice. It's annoying in this game. Uh, especially with upgrade materials because upgrade excuse me materials have weight so basically what you have to do is you have to constantly come back to stockpile Thomas and give him all your shit the whole time um, but the good news is this is really like essential to this game being as playable as it is so I have in my inventory right now a bunch of upgrade materials and you can see here on the right side there are units of weight to each one there's different units of weight here now I have to store those with stockpile or else they're gonna be super heavy so I'm gonna deposit them all here's I'm just depositing every type of upgrade material I have so now that all that stuff's deposited let's say hypothetically I were to go to the blacksmith and try to upgrade a weapon if I need to use the upgrade materials that I just deposited to upgrade my weapon, I do not have to go get them before I upgrade. He will know what upgrade materials are available in Stockpile Thomas's inventory automatically. The same with the other blacksmith. So that's like a gameplay consideration that I think uh, they did. And it really helps make this tolerable, the item burden concept. So, as I said, item burden is the maximum amount of items you can carry. Currently, I'm using up 40.3 units of my available 98 units. So, it's pretty interesting. Yeah, you don't want to kill any of these guys. Friendly fire is on in this game, just like all the other ones. So if you hit these guys, you're fucked. Especially the Maiden in Black. You might as well give up. Unless you don't want to level up. Anyway, what's up, Land Shark? What's up, everybody? So, Crescent Falchion. I don't know if I can upgrade this yet, can I? Upgrade weapon. Scimitar. 
Oh, he's not even the guy that could do it yet. That's right. Okay, so whatever. We'll get to that later. I'm going to deposit all this shit that I picked up that I don't need. Like the bastard sword, scimitar, mail breaker, this shit. Don't need that. Or that. Or that. All this stuff has weight. Even the arrows have weight to them. So, unless you need them, leave everything behind. All the armor, everything you basically loot, you want to leave behind. Just for the sake of, uh, whatever. If you kill the maiden, she will just come back up. Are you sure about that? I don't think that's true, but maybe it is. The maiden is immortal. Yeah, I've never hit him. I'm not sure about that. I thought that the doll in Bloodborne was the first immortal um, maiden or whatever. I wasn't aware of that. Because you know the doll in Bloodborne, if you kill her, she comes back. But the Emerald Herald, if you kill her, she's dead. And the Firekeeper in Firelink Shrine, she also is killable. That's for sure. So, I didn't know that. They changed that? So they, they patched that. When I originally played the game as an old school player, maybe Gina Lynn is a, is a noob. Hey, Gina Lynn, eat shit. I think you're a fucking uh, 09 or now that I think about it. Because when the game first came out, I'm pretty sure she could die. I'm pretty sure. But I don't, maybe not. Either way, eat shit, Gina Lynn. How's it going? I'm not going to kill the maiden. No way. Originally, she could die. They changed it. Yeah, I thought so. That's what I remembered, too. Get wrecked questioning my fucking shit damn you got super wrecked I didn't even realize you were gonna get yeah. wrecked that hard Gina Lynn that's crazy I was starting to consider like oh maybe I'm wrong or something but turns out that you're hella wrong bummer anyway whatever it's no big deal O Niners are old school now so you're good so let's see here we could do this right I mean, we're pretty buff now, so we could do this part. Oh, damn. You played four months after it came out? Bummer, man. I played it on day one. Get on my level, bro. Chat room, would you guys tell him to get on my level? Okay, so anyway. I'm just talking shit, man. Be cool. But also get wrecked. So we can proceed. Wow, I do so much damage to these guys. It's crazy. Jesus Christ. Four months after release? What a scrub. <laughs> Look at me. Again, surrounded by evil warriors. Could you, perhaps, help me one last time? Clear out the soldiers at the far end of this passage, if it pleases you. The Lord's Path, just down yonder, has degenerated into a feeding ground of fire <laughs> dragons. Have your wits about you. That's Ostrava. He's in trouble again. But don't worry, bud. We'll help you. We'll save him. I mean, he's our boy after all. I can't believe how much damage output I have. It's crazy. This weapon's cheap. It's only plus one. But it has an A scaling. In magic. And I put all my starting uh, souls into magic. Yeah, Lord Ostrava, he's real good at getting his fucking ass into trouble. This is a Return of Hellkite, second part. What a cool area.
This area is guarded by a hell kite. The first time I played this game, this part of the game was just like amazing to me. I couldn't believe my eyes. What a cool ass fucking design. This bridge to c proceed is guarded by this monstrous dragon that isn't even really killable at this point. And the only real way to kill him is to cheese him out from downtown and it really takes some dedication. Move the camera up a bit? Sure. I mean, you could see my souls, but I hear you. Anyway, what's up everybody? Eris, how do you rank the games in the Souls series? Uh, I mean, I really like Demon Souls and I really like Dark Souls 1. Basically, I like all of them. I could play all of them forever. I could just play them over and over again. Except for Dark Souls 2. Dark Souls 2, I don't think I could play it anymore now. I think I'm tired of it. Uh, I think Dark Souls 2, if you want to really enjoy that game, it really rely. It, it depends on you enjoying that game's PvP a lot. If you enjoy that game's PvP, you'll tolerate that game's shitty, garbage, bland uh, PvE. Uh, but I don't really love the PvP, so I don't really give a shit. I mean, I can't even really judge Bloodborne yet because Bloodborne's DLC isn't even out. And from the from my, uh, I think honestly, the Bloodborne DLC could be amazing. I suspect that that because that game was so rushed, who knows how much of it is gonna end up in that DLC? That game was hella rushed. It was delayed a month, right? It was supposed to come out in February. It came out in March, and. When it came out, it wasn't even done. It had crazy load times. The load screens just said Bloodborne. And they changed the reward system of the Chalice Dungeons quite a bit, too. And they improved them. When the game launched, the Chalice Dungeons were bogus. Totally bogus. I'm killing all these guys to save us, Drava. Ring of Gash Resistance. I think that defends against bleed. Here he is. Thank you. Hey, what's up, that Kitty? Makes twice. Nice seeing Thanks you, Thanks to amiga. you, I can now forge ahead. This up, is Jose? a token of my gratitude. Eating hot Please dogs accept. again, huh? Boom. So we saved Ostrava. He's good to go. Now, uh, I think I gotta take a piss. I'm pretty sure that's what that sensation is. So I kinda wanna go somewhere safe where I could take a piss. Hmm. I think I'm pretty safe here. This is a really cool area because you can see out into the castle. You can go there. That looks very far away, but you can go there. And the, the Hellkite Dragon's outside, too. He's patrolling, waiting for you to go outside so he could blow fire at your ass. What an awesome game. Fucking love this game. Anyway, I'm going to take a piss, Lord Chatroom. After I take a piss, I'm going to come back. What the hell was that? Oh. Where does he go? I don't know where he goes. I'm concerned that he might go further than I want him to and get killed. I don't know where he goes. We're gonna have to wait and see. Okay. Where are you going, dude? Oh, quit out? Yeah, that's a good idea. I always forget to do that. Yeah, just pause it. <laughs> I don't know where he goes. I've never even explored this.
Oh, he goes up here. It's safe up here. That's cool. Tight. Okay. I'm going to take a leak, Lord Chat Room. And then when I come back, I'm going to look at some flowers. And we're going to continue playing this amazing game. Hold your horses. Just a sec. There we go. I'll be right back. All right, I'm back, but before I continue, Lord Chatroom, join me as we gaze into the eyes of Lord Umbasa. Cheers. Look at him if you got him, Lord Chat.
All right. Yeah, I've been on for like almost two hours now, I think. It's been going pretty well so far, actually. Uh, I'm playing my first female character, and I'm also doing a magic uh, build. Her name is Magic Samantha. She's uh, the donation girl. She's the one that talks when people donate. What do you think of DS3 so far? I like it a lot. I have no complaints exploring Lauren. Especially considering how early on it is. I gotta turn the music off. So now we can continue. So I gotta go downstairs. In this game, the first time you pick up an item, it's kind of like Dark Souls and Dark Souls 2. If it's the first time you've ever picked up an item, it automatically equips it. But also, you know, I thought that was it. But also, like, let's say I pick up whatever, like a firebomb. If it's the first time I've ever picked up a firebomb, it auto-equips it to my belt. But then, let's say I use that, so I have no firebombs again. If I pick up another firebomb, it will auto-equip it again. So it's not the first time you ever pick it up. It's the first time you pick it up if you have none in your inventory. So that's a big difference, actually. That was not explained to me when I asked, but I think it makes a difference. Careful not to uh, slip. You can see the Hellkite out there flying around waiting for us, and then down there, that's the city of Boletaria, right? This is the Boletarian palace we're in. But down there is the city. Really cool. Anyway. Oh, that's a fucking bullshit ambush trap. Classic Dark Souls. They always put a treasure, and if you go and get it, you're dead. Dogs are real perros in this game. Dogs are real perros. What's up? Oh! What's up, everybody? What's up, Crux? What's up? OMG Volpix. How's everybody doing? So anyway, we're just going in this underneath passageway, this subterranean passageway, which is actually not really subterranean. It's just inside the one of the walls of the castle. And these like big ass holes in the wall makes you think like there were like there was like a battle or something and I don't know. Obviously, there's been damage here to this wall. You don't know what it's from. But look, it's our buddy, the the dregling ah, we meet again. Fancy salesman. That. Hope you find What's something that suits you. I don't think his inventory changed. Oh yeah, it did. He has turpentine now. Um, but that's it, right? Maybe he had turpentine originally too. But either way, it doesn't look like he has anything Hard that we need. Eh? I'm sure you'll take. Turpentine's cool though. No, the lore in this game is not the same as Dark Souls. The Dark Souls is like the spiritual successor to this game, but Dark Souls 2 is more closely related to Dark Souls 1. Uh, it's not, you know. You get the drill. Excuse me. Yeah, I love this game. Waiting for him to pass by. Kill everybody for us. Watch out for these crossbow guys. They could be a real bitch. I mean, every enemy in this game, if you approach it wrong, you're gonna get fucking wrecked every time. It doesn't matter what the enemy is, it doesn't matter. Even the first draglings will kill you if you don't show them respect. I wanna get those treasures. So I'm gonna go get them. Uh oh. Uh oh. This is a bad idea. Ah! 
I knew it was a bad idea. Fuck! I only have a thousand souls, so it's okay. This is exactly why you want to die in the Nexus, though. Because if you die accidentally, nothing happens. You're good to go. Fuck. What's up? How's it going? Dead. You die so fast. Especially this early. This game's awesome. These guys here, these uh, phalanx, whatever, these guys are actually really useful because they are, you can farm them for upgrade materials. They drop shards of sharp stones and shards of hard stones. I believe both, but maybe just one. I can't recall. Either way, uh, so you can farm this area early if you choose to upgrade your weapon. Unfortunately, they didn't drop any that time. What's up, Pixel Pirate? This is a round where you're safe, next to these dead bodies. And once you pass by, you just run for it. Remember that if your equip burden is a little bit higher, I don't remember what the exact breakpoints are, but if it's higher than it is, mine is right now, you'll run slower. That will affect your ability to make it across this bridge without getting hit. There's my souls. We gotta kill these crossbow men too. Again. There we go. My damage output is crazy high right now. It's really high. It's not supposed to be this high at this point in the game. It's a, I, I don't know if it's an <clears throat> exploit or what, but my damage output is crazy high. You guys saw how fast I killed the Adjudicator. I destroyed that boss. It's super cheap. Okay, now we're gonna run, we're gonna run for it. Next swipe. There we go. Stone of Ephemeral Eye is like a human effigy in this game. Or like a humanity, kind of. Damage is crazy high. I don't know if it counts as an exploit or what, but if you do that strat that I did and you get that crescent falchion, your damage output is fucking cheating. I mean, but then again, you can start the game as a royal, which is what I did, and that in itself is fucking cheating, right? I mean, the royal in itself is fucking even cheaper than this damage output. Crazy how little damage I do on the gecko. Have you played Witcher 3? No, I haven't. It doesn't look very appealing to me though. How many playthroughs of Demon Souls have you done? I don't know. I don't really keep track. I just play what games I feel like playing and whatever sounds like it would be fun. I mean, you gotta think about it, dude. I play video games for like 50 hours a week, dude. It's my fucking job. And I really like doing it. And in order for me to keep enjoying it, I have to make sure I play things that I really feel like playing and games that I really love. This happens to be one of those games for me. I could play it an unlimited amount of time, times and I would enjoy it. Especially, you know, if it's going to be on stream and this many people will enjoy playing it with me. I mean, why wouldn't I? Just tell me where to sign. What else, what else could a girl like me ask for? 
How many people are watching this? 750 people are here joining me, enjoying one of my favorite games of my entire life. Just tell me where to sign, pal. This is my favorite boss in any Souls game. Lord Tower Knight. No, I don't, I'm not interested in Assassin's Creed. I don't like that shit. It's not, not my thing. Okay. <laughs> I started my first playthrough of Demon Souls two weeks ago. It's been rough, but fun. That's how it is, dude. It's always rough, but fun. Good shit. Okay, so this is, as I said, my favorite boss in any Souls game. The first time I played this game, I didn't realize what kind of, uh, you know, I didn't know much about the game. I just knew I was going to get wrecked. And my friend Jason Arney, who works at Namco, he still works there. He was the one that told me about this game when he, he lives in Japan and he was playing it in Japan before it was out in America. He told me, dude, you got to play this game. It's dope. So he's the one that told me. Anyway, this boss is awesome. It's my favorite. What's up, I eat food? How's it going? What's up, Andrew? What's up, Revan? Reven me this. BG Pope. How long you think you're gonna be streaming tonight? I don't know until I'm tired. This is the Tower Knight. When I saw this, I was like, "Dude, he's that big, and I gotta fight all these crossbowmen." Because by this point, the crossbowmen had killed me like a million times. And then the music starts. Best boss. Best boss. What's up, Dead Yonkey? How's it going? So the best strategy for this boss is to make sure that you kill all of these crossbowmen that are in the surrounding balconies before you engage the boss because they're just gonna fuck you up. You can't really do much without that. So just take your time, one at a time. I wanna make sure that they don't drop anything. If you stay on the move, he can't really hit you. That shit he throws at you is no, is no deal. That barely hurt. So we're just killing all these guys. And clearing out the area. There's one more. So now they're all dead. And we're gonna engage Lord Tower Knight. I'm gonna remove the crescent moon. And we're gonna go for it. Here we go. The music's so sick. So you want to go for his rear, much like many of the enemies in the Souls game. He's weak from the rear, but he does have that AoE attack. It's kind of dangerous. He'll also do a Korean backdash that will fuck you up. You gotta be careful. So you, you fuck up his Achilles tendons, and then he goes down. And that's when you go for his head. His head's his weak spot. Oh my god, look at the damage I'm doing. He is fucked. Jesus, that was awesome. It's a good thing you enjoy the Souls game. You know it's written in our contract. We got you for another three years. Thanks so much, legal department. Uh, you know what? Just tell me where to sign. I'll play this game forever. This game's awesome. Anyway, yeah, I am doing... Thank you again. ATP legal department. I'll play this game forever. What do you mean three years? I love this game Anyway, uh, I am doing a magic build the reason I'm doing so much damage is because I have 25 magic and I picked up the crescent falchion which scales to magic This is magic Samantha. Don't you know her name? Magic Samantha that was fucking crazy Destroyed the tower knight that boss is tricky. I bet you there's some people in the chat room that are like, that boss killed me a hundred times. <laughs> this game's awesome. 
This came before Dark Souls. This is the first Souls game ever. Let's level up. Seek soul power. Let's go 15 vitality. And I guess we should go... Let strength be granted so intelligence, be right? Until I get a second memory slot. Spell memory is like attunement slots in this game. There we go. So now I have two attunement slots available to me. Art thou done? Main th Will this weapon scale to late game? Uh, I'm not sure what you mean by that, but you can upgrade it and you can also level up your magic which will give you more scaling it's a, a scaling in magic now but I think it might go up <clears throat> excuse me what's up dousing fire what's up spyron you know, someone was in the chat asking if I'm going to play the new Deus Ex game. Uh, yeah, chances are high that I'll play it. I don't know anything about it, though. Uh, I played Deus Ex Human Revolution for like 30 hours. I thought it was good enough to play, so... Anyway, you guys know the rule. I, I beat a boss, and I'm in human form. Look at my cool Quiet character. It looks like Quiet from uh, MGS5. Anyway, you gotta commit Harry Kiri in the Nexus. Once again, the reason you do that is so that the soul, uh, so that the world tendency doesn't get affected by your death. It's an insurance plan. What's up, everybody? How you guys doing today? Sunday night. You guys have a good weekend? Any cool concerts? Did any dudes go out to the clubs and nail some, you know, uh, horizontal refreshments? Or like maybe some chicks in the chat room, they went to the clubs and scored some serious hot dogs. You know, I don't know. You never know. Just saying. Yeah, I love Demon Souls. Demon Souls best souls. Yeah, world tendency sucks. What's up, Meta Snake? Your friend got engaged? That's cool. Damn, perhaps Pi. Thanks very much, perhaps Pi, for the three months of consecutive support in a row. Thank you, thank you, Sean. Given those hot dogs, will ya? So, can I proceed past this? Maybe I can't. I think I cannot proceed past this, right? Yeah, there is a fog. So this is an interesting gameplay design choice. So, in an attempt, because at the beginning of this game, you can go to any stage. Like, it's almost like you can go to the last level at the beginning of the game if you want, right? There is no last level. So, in an attempt to kind of introduce... Who said that? Human Resources How's Department. Your gout? Just wondering. It couldn't be better. Knock on old wood. It couldn't be better. Thank you for asking. Uh, uh oh. What happened to my camera? What the hell? How did that happen? Hey, thanks very much, ATP Human Resources Department. What happened to my shitty camera? This thing is on its last leg, honestly. What's the problem, camera? Come on, man. What happened? What's the matter, girl? <laughs> Hold on a second. Let me do some uh, Lord Troubleshooting. Where is this piece of shit plugged in anyway? Okay, unplug it. Plug it back in.
Boom, we're back in business. Uh oh. Uh oh. Boom, we're back in business. Good shit, good shit. Okay. What were we saying? Oh, yeah. So, uh, due to the gameplay design of there being different worlds all accessible, are you into anime? No, man. IT department. We're looking into it. Check your email. We're looking into it? Into what? Thanks very much. Um, mm, IT department. Hmm, what was I saying here? I forgot. I got interrupted. Anyway, um, so as I was saying, you can access all the different stages at the beginning of the game, right? So logically, you're like intuitively as a player, you might want as a completionist to finish the first stage before you move to the second one even though you can access the second one before you finish the first one so I think in an attempt to force or encourage players to explore different parts of the game before finishing the first one they force you after you defeat the first the second boss in this game after you defeat him you're stuck with this a thick colorless fog holds you back only those who have slain an archdemon may pass beyond this point. So now we know that we can't go further in the first world. So we gotta go back to the Nexus, and it's kind of like telling us, hey, don't try to beat the first world yet. It's gonna get hard. Go to the other worlds, see what, what you could figure out, and I'll see you later. You know what I mean? It's pretty cool. I like it. Whoa. <clears throat> me, it was all me. I know for a fact that's not Mad Cat's E Chang. Who said that? I knew it. I knew it wasn't. Mad Cat's E Chang wouldn't be caught dead donating three dollars, and I know that because he's told me that. He's said that before. Please, do your research on the primary shareholder of Avoiding the Puddle Enterprises before you try to impersonate him in a donation message. But thanks very much. Three dollars is three dollars. Muchos Garcias. Oh yeah, uh, no, I'm not into anime. I've never been into anime. I don't have any wall scrolls at all. However, I'm going to my first wall scroll convention in my life. I'm going to Yumacon at the end of this week. I'm going to be there for Halloween weekend. It's going to be pretty neat. They're having a tournament, so I'm uh, commentating for them. For those of you who don't know, I'm also a fighting game commentator at fighting game tournaments. Wooden Catalyst. Okay. So the next Wait, thing we could do is we could go back to the beginning of the Boletarian Palace and collect on our rewards for raising the world tendency closer to white. Yeah, there are fighting game tournaments. You should check them out. They're pretty hardcore. They give away like $25,000 and shit like it's nothing. Winner gets $25,000 for winning in Killer Instinct. Are you fucking serious? Yeah. $10,000 prize bonus for Mortal Kombat 10. Yeah, they mean business, dude. These guys fucking play their asses off. And you know what's the best part of it? Oh, wow, that door's not open yet. I thought it opens at this point. Never mind. The best part of it is when they lose, they get really butt hurt because some of them are silly enough to not be sponsored yet still do this for a living so they really work hard and it could be heartbreaking when they lose and when it's heartbreaking when they lose it's awesome making fun of them 
So it's like tight. As a commentator, you can really like enjoy those moments where they get hella pissed and they just like get mad grumpy and you could just be like, look at this guy right now, you know, observe him in his natural grumpy habitat. Look at this motherfucker. And it doesn't even matter. You're not the guy that made him mad. You're just like a spectator. The coolest thing about being a commentator for fighting games is like you're the leader of the chat room. Who said that? Check the lore next time if y'all want to frame me. The lore is we give him at least a five so that he can buy a J. <laughs> Ooh, Lord E. Chang. Coming in hot. Thanks very much. I told you guys, don't fuck with the, the ATP lore around here, will ya? Thanks very much, man. Um, what was I talking about? I forgot what I was saying. Hmm. Did I drop off all my shit? Oh, yeah. So we could go to the second stage now. Oh yeah, commentator. If you're a commentator, it's like you're the leader of the chat army. I mean, all you are doing is... I mean, the chat is a commentator, right? That's what they're doing. Everything they see, they say something. If they see a girl, they go, it's a girl. Hey guys, hey guys, it's a girl. If they see, like, if someone's getting owned, they go, damn, this guy's getting fucking owned. You know, so if they see a fat guy, they're like, look at that fat guy, you know, or whatever. So, I mean, being a commentator is kind of like being a professional stream monster, right? All you're doing is just commenting on what's going on and making sure that the other stream monsters are pleased. Oh, fucking stupid bitch! Don't leave the scene, bitch! I got questions for you, motherfucker. That was sick. Anyway, so, yeah, commentary is awesome. I think it's my favorite hobby of all. It's just a little bit harder to do than playing video games at home, right? But it's my favorite hobby. I mean, it was a hobby, now it's my job, which is pretty cool. That's always nice, right? Do something long enough that you get good enough at it that you can start doing it for your job. Pretty sweet. I'm glad someone thinks I'm good enough at it. Or a couple people. That lever we just pulled activates these elevators. We're gonna go all the way downstairs first. What's up, everybody? This game's so cool. Man, I never really looked into the distance at those trees out there. This area is really neat. So we could get off over here, pick up this stone of ephemeral eyes. It's not a bad treasure. Now we're going all the way to the top. What's up, Plastic Hawks? Strong Style Cody versus Jade? Oh wow, that was a at-home commentary. Right? I think it was. Let's see what kind of damage I do to these guys. Of course the backstab is going to do a lot. Wow, I one-shot these guys too? This setup is cheap for early game. I'm just cutting these guys in half easily. That is crazy. Okay, we're going to go to the top floor. Hey, what's up everybody who's new in the chat room? We've heard all that haggard shit before, but welcome. People are just calling you a Studebaker because the word Hagrid is banned in the chat. We use that as a mechanism to identify newbies. 
and Studebaker is just what we call newbies who are uncreative in their breeding. Ow! <laughs> Rushing battle axe. Wow, that guy fell through the rocks. Crazy. What's up, everybody? Now we gotta go back downstairs. Hey, what's up, GT Abstract? Hey, what's up, 202? What's up, Red Clyde? I hate you much. What's up? How's it going? Alright, here we go. So now that we did all that elevator bullshit, we could uh, we can proceed. What's up, Shane? What do you think of Loti or God? I don't have much of an opinion. I think he's uh, definitely a part of an equation, right? I think that the grudge match he had between uh, himself and Biscant was like a masterfully executed uh, like event and it was one of the hypest fighting game moments I think you know a lot of people have been around it was awesome and he was a part of it so no matter how goofy of a guy he is and no matter what you don't agree with or what, what you do agree with he was a part of something really cool and without him, that thing couldn't have existed. So, as far as I'm concerned, you know, that that grudge match was awesome. And it's going to be awesome forever. It was on fucking uh, uh, World Star Hip Hop. And, you know, the scant hella owned him. He told him he's going to... He got the taste of his dick in his mouth. And he's half his size. And white. It was awesome. Right? So whatever. Who gives a shit about the details? I don't even know Loti or God. I don't know anything about him. I met him like one time. I have no opinion about him other than he was a part of an event that I really, really loved. He was a part, an integral part of one of my favorite fighting game events ever. That shit was sweet. <laughs> I was laughing like this fucking fat official here. Pick up all these, uh, what do you call them? Upgrade materials. This guy's trying to ambush. Fuck you, bitch. Man, I thought, oh, I was two-handing it before. That's why I was doing one, one hot. One hots. One hits. It's getting late, chat room. My charisma levels go down by quite a bit when I'm tired. Usually they're through the roof, but... When I'm tired, charisma levels are lacking. Are the new emotes working? No, I was denied. Unfortunately, I think I have to give up. They're not going to give this shit to me. I applied to get this emoticon. Not that one. That's the fan art. I applied to get... Hmm. Where is it? This emoticon. But they didn't let me have it. And then I changed the hair from blonde to black. And they still said you can't have it. So. Yeah. Bummer. I don't know. I asked Kill9 and he said you might as well just stop trying. It doesn't seem like they're going to give it to you. But you know what's even fucked up? Even more fucked up than this whole thing? That guy Dan's game who's hella fucking esports. He's like the king of esports, right? That guy has a, oh my god, he has a fucking uh, emoticon of the vault boy. 
I mean, it's not exactly the Vault Boy, but he has one. So uh, apparently his is not like, uh... Oh, fuck! No! Ow! Okay, I'm not dead. Be cool, be cool. Composure, composure. Eat some grass. Now kill these street toughs. You guys smoking reefer? What are these guys doing over here? Kill the street toughs. It's not a big deal. I have to go here anyway. So this is perfect. Kill all these street toughs. They're one shot losers. Boom, boom, boom. Pull the lever. Essential. Anyway, yeah. Whatever. No big deal. I have to become more esports to get what I want. No big deal. I'll become more esports then. That's not that hard. Just give me some time. My esports levels are already rising. It's just a matter of time. You know? Time, dedication, hot dogs, cheeseburgers. Ooh, Man, this is so fun. <laughs> I've never done this before, doing the magic upgrade for the Crescent Falchion. That's cool. Any items I'm missing? I love this stack of these carts. Looks really cool. Like, what the fuck stacked them up like that? Anyway, this is the beginning where I fought that fat official. If you go back around. What's up, everybody? So this is where that fat official knocked me down. But it seems as though he's died. Do you guys know how he could have possibly died? How did he die? <laughs> he was alive. That is very weird. I've never seen that. I don't know what killed him. Yeah, I know. Dan's OG. I like him. I follow him too. I'm a fan of Dan's game. But yeah, they didn't give it to me. I understand. Those are the rules of the universe. You know, chat room.